Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's tutorial I want to show you my most used synthesizer in 2022. Now I've excluded Serum and Vital because else the competition will be unfair because obviously I've used them a lot this year. But in today's tutorial I want to show you yeah, the synthesizer I've used the most, the synthesizer I had the most fun with and actually used it a lot in my tracks in 2022. Now before we dive into this tutorial, if you'd like to support the channel you can consider becoming one of my patrons or buy my presets on Gumroad or just leave a like, comment and subscribe, things like that helps the channel a lot. Now with that said, let's dive into this tutorial. So my most used synthesizer in 2022 is the one and only Native Instruments Massive. Yes, this almost 20 years old synthesizer made a huge comeback, uh, at least for me, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Now, in a nutshell, it's a three oscillators wavetable synthesizer that has a classic a subtractive uh, arch detector. Basically, you have the oscillators that goes to a filter and actually two filters that you can set in serial and parallel and you know how much I love this. And then everything goes to the amp. There's two inserts effects before the amp. That's really nice. And then to the FX section and to the output. Now, why I love this synthesizer and it's because I think in today's synthesizers there's a huge problem. They can do way too much. They are way too open and this is a limiting synthesizer. Now I know that when it came out it wasn't that limiting but when you're used to working with synthesizers like Serum and Vital this is a huge limiting synthesizer. I mean for instance you only have 85 wavetables and you can't import your own wavetables so you have to know which wavetable you want to use and what you will get out of it and each oscillator for example has a modifier in here so for example there's spectrum three bending algorithms and formats and that's pretty much it unlike what we're using you know vital and serum where we have a lot of modifiers even in pigments you know here you're really limited and you also have a modulation oscillator in here but it only has one wave which is a sine wave and it can ring mod only one of the oscillators phase modulate basically fm only one of the oscillators play with the position of the wave table of only one of the oscillators you got the point it is really limiting and this is one of the main reasons why i love this synthesizer because this year I had a lot of breakdowns where my imagination was just empty. I, I didn't know what to do with the synthesizer. Like I was looking at the synthesizer, for example, Serum, and there's just way too much things I can do that, you know, my brain just like, it was just out of imagination. And this helps keep things in track because you're way too limited compared to today's standards, you know. The second thing that I really love about the synthesizer is the simple GUI. Now you can call me this 90s kid having his nostalgia phase, wanting everything to look like old school, but I'm really fed up with these graphical interfaces. Like they're way too expressive and I don't mind that. But the thing is, at a certain point, my eyes start taking decisions instead of my ears, you know. And I am not the use your ears bro type of dude, but at a certain point, you have to use your ears to take like the the right decision you know because at a certain point the eye will just take the decision that this frequency is bad because i don't know it's in the muddy region or something but you know that's wrong you at a certain point you really have to use your ears i, I hope that made sense now the next thing that i love about the synthesizer it's it's modulation system now it's really special because for let's start with the lfos okay you don't have a classic LFO with sample and hold, all of that stuff. These, they're all LFOs that repeat the same cycles. And you have a lot of cycles to choose from. So you have your classic ones and you have all of these cycles to choose from. And the thing is, it will always repeat this kind of like what they call random step. So it, it's not random. It's like a pre-recorded sequence, you know, if that makes sense. And what's really interesting about the LFOs is that you can morph between two shapes. So you can either here this one or the sine wave in here or somewhere in between and this gives it like a new dimension you know at least for me when i first used massive i was just scrolling through presets and i didn't really understand how it works and now i see a lot of potential in the way that these things actually operate again it's all about 
reviving my creativity and my imagination, which which is, as I said, I had like a lot of breakdowns and like at a certain point I was just, I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't want to draw another freaky shape for the LFO. Here I just have them and it kind of like forces me to think of, okay, now I'm going to fade between these two or I will create a new kind of like a mutant shape between these two shapes in here, you know, and I really like this. I mean, at, from just like a creative point of view, I, I really love this. It's limiting, but at the same time, it's still way too open. You know, I hope that makes sense. And same thing goes for the performer. By the way, all of these green ones can be either LFOs, performers, or steppers. Steppers is just like a random step sequencer, so I won't talk about it a lot. But the performer one is really nice because it has like a two 16 bar sequences that you can morph between, just like with the LFO. But you can't draw the shapes in here. You only have these curves to use. And just like with the LFO, it's again another way of reviving the creativity. And yeah, I get it now. This is why I love the synthesizer. It successfully revived my creativity and my imagination, you know, while making sounds. And yeah, <laughs> that's why I really love it. Okay, up next, um, I want to talk a little bit about the envelopes in here. Now, the thing that I found special about these envelopes is that they can loop. Now, I know in Serum and Vital, you can just loop the LFO and choose your looping points. But what what's interesting in here is, so let's turn on the looping. Uh, okay, so turn down the sustain a little bit. So you have two shapes for the looping and you can morph between these two shapes. And, and I think that this is really interesting because again, you're limited to these shapes and that's pretty much it. And you really have to think strategically to which decision and which shape you're going to use to actually get to the sound that you need. And I think this makes it a really expressive synthesizer. Now, please don't get me wrong, you know, when I talk a lot about the synthesizer, I'm not trying like to make you go buy it or anything. I'm not sponsored by Native Instruments. I actually bought Massive myself with my own money. But it helped me so much get back my creativity that I'm just impressed with it, you know. So, and, and I want to share this with you, you know, how like how impressed with am I with it, especially that, that I think I've been using it for over six or seven months now. So yeah, uh, I really love the synthesizer. Now, before we start going through some sounds examples and actually listen to what it's capable of doing, I want to talk a little bit about the filters. Now, as I said, you have two filters, you can morph between them. But what makes them special is that, well, first of all, they're limited. Most of them are like a variations of a low pass filter. You have for low pass 4, low pass 2, Scream is a low pass filter, Acid is a low pass filter too. But especially the bandpass is really special because you have this continuously morphing let's say bandwidth like you're not limited to like 24 decibel per octave or 18 or 12 or anything you have all of the range in between i don't know what's the maximum of the bandwidth but check this out let's set the envelope in here to maximum take off the looping so we have a saw wave and now listen to this filter let's take it down an octave give it some resonance Okay, let's open the bandwidth a little bit. You have all of these timbres to play with and it makes the filter really special. Let's give it a really simple squelch test so you will hear it really in action. So let's take an LFO in here. I'll set it to a triangle and let's modulate the cutoff two octaves, just like so. So now we have this. Okay, pretty cool. Now let's turn on the filter, give it some resonance, and let's add a delay in here. Now, I didn't talk about the effects, but the effects section in here is really simple. Uh, like you have the classics, phaser, flanger, chorus, but you don't have a lot of control over them. Like for example, the phaser, you only have to try with the rate of its internal LFO feedback and depth, and that's pretty much it. But you don't, you can't really choose the frequency. Uh, it's nice to add like 
uh, something to the sound, but it's not like the real phaser that, that, that you will use, you know, like the synced screamy phaser, if that makes sense. So anyways, let's set to delay synced in here. Really juicy, right? Let's open the bandwidth a little bit. Give it a little bit more resonance. It sounds really, really nice. We will listen to the examples in just a second. Just one last thing that I forgot to tell you about the synthesizer is that it has two inserts effects in here. And these inserts effects are like simple delay, sample and hold, big crusher. The sample and hold is some sort of a bit crusher too. Uh, you have high pass, low pass filter, sign parabolic and hot clipper in here they're all like sorts of distortion but it has this frequency shifter which can do a lot to the sound like i just can't tell you how much it's it can do to the sound like you know what we're going to listen to the examples and from there you will hear what it's capable of doing <laughs> crazy psychedelic sounds now this format if i'll take it off let's set it to spectrum and actually open it all the way up and let me also turn off the frequency shifter and now it sounds like this <laughs> six psychedelic sounds now let's hear another example now this patch shows exactly what this format algorithm is capable of doing and how it's capable of like turning almost whatever sound you feed in to a virus like sound it's actually some sort of a windowed sync algorithm anyways so it sounds like this right and when i'll turn off this format model it in here check this out we had a sine wave and it was doing all of the job actually it gave it this virus ti sound literally one year after the virus ti actually was released i think this is really impressive i, I know it's not a grain oscillator but it really gets close to the grain oscillator let's hear another example Again, sick psychedelic sounds. Like every time you do a patch with this synthesizer, at least me, I'm like, where have you been all of my life? Actually, it has been there since 2006, but like, man, I should have been using it way more before this year, you know? Now, let's hear another example. classic FM stuff and we can actually make it play with this uh, kind of like an atmospheric lead and we'll get something that sounds like this. I think that this is really sick, the thing that you can make with the synthesizer. Now I have one last example that I want to show you. It's on the experimental side of things and it's one of these sounds that you have to sample and cherry pick out of it. And it sounds like this.
And yeah, that's all about Massive for now. If you'd like to see more of these tutorials where I talk about the gear I've used in 2022 and why, please leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, I really hope you've liked uh, this tutorial. I really hope you found it useful. And yeah, see you next time.